In this Midjourney tutorial for beginners, I'll show you everything that you need to know in order to use image prompts to combine two or more images to create something entirely new, including how to upload images, the correct syntax that you should be using, and how you can add text prompts to change them even more. Hi, it's Christian Heidorn from Tokenized AI, where I show you how to navigate the exciting new world of AI software. If you see value in this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. It really makes a huge difference. All of the links and everything I mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description box below. And while you're there, make sure you smash that subscribe button. Welcome back. I'm going to show you now how to combine two images into something completely new in Midjourney. Now, before we do this, since the way Midjourney treats the image prompts has changed fundamentally in version four, we're going to have to switch to version four. Technically, you could just add the algorithm modifier at the very end of your prompt, but I think for most of us, this is going to be the easier way to do it. So I've now switched to version four and we're going to start off by uploading a couple of images. So I prepared a few things. So uh, an image of a Viking, an image of Abraham Lincoln, uh, a Shaolin warrior and a winter landscape in the mountains. I'm going to upload all four of these into Discord so that we can then get the links to those URLs because that's what we're going to need to uh, add into the image prompts. So I'm going to start off first of all by taking the copying the link to the winter landscape and I'm going to start typing my imagine prompt and I'm going to add that first link as the first image prompt. Now we need a second image prompt and for this I'm going to use the Shaolin warrior copy that URL as well and I'll add this as the second image prompt now I'm not gonna add anything else now I could do that but let's first see what happens if I just combine these two and whether it actually gives me something that makes sense so let's see and voila there's our first set of images let's have a look and as you can see what it's done is it's understood let me just quickly move my image here a bit it's understood that the first image had basically a castle and like mountains and a winter landscape. And it also understood that the second image had a Shaolin warrior. And what it's basically done is it's taken those two concepts and combined them into one. And I've not given any additional direction to how it should interpret these. Instead, it's just gone ahead and done something, right? And I think in this particular case, it's actually used the, it looks a little bit like it's taken literally like a combination of the styles between the landscape and the Shaolin warrior. Now, I'm not a particularly big fan of this style. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to redo that whole process, but I'm going to add some text prompts to it just to give some direction. Now, let me close this first. The nice thing is now I can technically, I don't need to recopy the URLs that um, I pasted into the command earlier. Now I can simply copy this first section because these are just basically Earl shortened or the an Earl shortener from um, Midjourney. And if I click on this, you'll see that it's actually the original image, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to type imagine. I'm going to paste those two image prompts again, but this time I'm going to add some text prompts. So first of all, I'm a fairly big fan of using cartoon style. Um, because it just it's slightly exaggerated, but it tends to spit out some really, really, really um, hyper-realistic uh, imagery. And we want this to be in the fantasy style. And I'm going to just add realistic. I'm not sure whether the realistic is necessary in this particular case, but let's see what happens. Let's wait that for that to generate. All right, and let's look at what it's given us. Now this is completely different already, right? Now the interesting thing about this is since I did add some text prompt, the fact that I added cartoon style and into the prompt, I think that basically tells the 
algorithm that I want something more in a cartoonish style, but what it also does is that most cartoons tend to be very much focused on characters. So that's why I think in this case it has opted to put more emphasis onto the character uh, and less onto the actual castle or any mountains, um, which is completely different than if we look at the previous one, where it had sort of a balanced approach, right? So you can already influence the weight of the two images without actually using image weight in that sense. And I think these are really, really great. Um, this is really the exact kind of style that I was looking for. And um, yeah, but we can actually change this even more. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to again, I'm going to copy this whole thing. I'm just, I'm just going to make a very slight change to our prompt. Imagine, paste this in here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a little bit of information that will say something about the type of composition that I'm looking for. And in this particular case, I actually don't want this to be a female um, Shaolin warrior because it, for some reason it's been interpreting it as a female. I want a male warrior that is um, marching towards a castle. I could also say a castle, it doesn't really matter. Um, and that's it, and let's see what happens. Wait for that to generate again. Okay, now let's have a look. And again, it's completely different now. So what it's clearly understood is that I actually wanted this type of composition. You have a warrior that is marching towards a, a castle. Um, that is exactly the type of composition I wanted. It has maintained largely the cartoonish style, although it's not as focused on the character as in the previous set, but it's still using, as you can see, the colors of the Shaolin warrior. Um, I, you could obviously argue that this doesn't look much like a Shaolin warrior anymore, um, but of course you could change your text prompt to incorporate that. So if you wanted it to really explicitly look like a Shaolin warrior, well then you would just add that little piece of information, that word into your prompt, and it would produce that sort of an image. Now, um, I'm going to move on forward to the next set of images because that's also where it becomes very interesting. Let me just quickly go grab my Abe Lincoln. Um, to be honest, I have not yet fully understood whether there is a difference between putting the image prompt or a particular image prompt first and the other one second. Um, I've not been able to determine whether there's any uh, weight in the order of them, but um, you could obviously experiment around, but it's very difficult to actually determine what is driving the algorithm, right? So, um, oh yeah, just as a note, right? If you are not familiar with how to uh, grab what I'm doing here, I'm basically opening the image that I uploaded. I click on open original and I right click the image to copy the image address, right? That's how I get the URL. Anyway, so I've post pasted these two into my prompt and I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not going to add any additional information and we'll see what it does when I combine a scene and a, or let's put it this way, more a, a concept and the portrait of a famous person. Let's see what happens. All right, so before we have a closer look, let's just have another look at the original source images. So the first image that we added was a photograph, an old photograph of Abe Lincoln. And the other image was this, like a digital art painting of a Viking warrior. And what Midjourney does when you combine them is he ba it basically gives you a Viking warrior with a face, or at least traits of the face of Abraham Lincoln. Um, I'm not sure in, I think in the photo, there were some elements that suggested what kind of clothes Abraham Lincoln was wearing. And I do think that this has been in, basically in, implemented into, well, it's used the information and given us kind of a weird mix here, but it looks quite, quite amazing to be honest. Let me try to zoom in. I mean, this is shockingly good. Now we're going to add some extra information on this because I just want to show you how we can use this. 
So instead of, I'm not going to reference Abraham Lincoln in any way. Instead, I'm going to just add to the prompt strong man defending the White House cartoon style. And I'm going to add a dash of cyberpunk because I want more of a modernish uh, look to it. And let's see what happens. All right, I think, <laughs> I mean, these are just, have a look at this. Isn't this just amazing? Let me see if I can get a bigger version of it. Just look what it's done. So it's understood that we wanted to have sort of a protector standing in front of the White House, and it's done that. It's also used um, elements of the color scheme that is associated with cyberpunk, and and it's also implemented this whole seen in the cartoon style that we set. Remember in the previous version of the image where we left out the text prompt, um, the style was primarily driven by a blend of the two source images. In this case, we've, we've told it, well, that source, that blend looks quite good, but we actually want to have it in a uh, cartoon style. And that's what it's done here. I mean, th this is, I mean, this is just amazing, right? So you've got this super strong, bulky guy and he has the traits of like slight traits of an abraham lincoln and um i don't know whether this actually it almost looks like this is like cyborg like um elements in his face anyway it's futuristic which uh, is just awesome now um we could technically this has nothing to do with combining images but if you wanted to you could also um do a remix now, remixing only works in version 4, and you need to kind of activate it. And uh, let's see what happens, though. I'm going to take... Let me see which variation I'm going to take. I'm going to take... I'm going to take version 2. And what I'm quickly going to add is... Strongman defending the White House. Holding a red balloon. And, yeah, let's try this one more time okay and so let's have a quick look uh, remixing takes a bit longer for generating but if we open it up we can see that it has kind of understood the red balloon element but it's not really implemented it in the way that I would have expected but point being is that you can blend these two images together uh, add a prompt to get the composition you like and then you can continue to build upon a particular variation that you really really like now all of this only works in version 4 and just to make prove a point I'm gonna switch back to version 3 and show you what happens if I take this prompt that first one and add these two image prompts in version 3 Okay, and let's have a real quick look. As you can see, this did not work the way we would have hoped. And the reason why it does not work is because in version 3, the way image prompts work is that the images are used more as an aspirational target. It does not mean that it will explicitly use the composition and the content of the image. Instead, it uses the rest of your prompt, and we didn't add any other text prompt, to drive the image towards well more to look more similar to the style and the overall uh, I can't really explain it to be honest but the overall style of the image prompts that you've given it and you can control how strongly that is um, done with image uh, sorry with image weights right um, now clearly this does not work that we had hoped and that's why you need to use this in version 4 which is much better added clearly um, but in version 4 you could technically even add I'm just gonna switch back real quick you could technically add more than just one image prompt uh, sorry more than two image prompts you could actually use three four five it doesn't really matter just be aware that the more you add the more complex it's going to get and the less you're going to see um, or the less you're going to recognize of each image in your final generated image. Um, it's much easier to do this with two and potentially with a third one. Uh, in some of the cases that I've experimented with, I've first built something with two images 
and then I've taken one of the new images and I've basically blended that with another image. So in total, I've used three, but the prompt itself is just a generated image with another image prompt. So this was how you use two images to combine them into something completely new in Midjourney. I hope you found this very useful and uh, I think you're going to have a lot of fun doing all sorts of shenanigans with this function. All right, I'll see you in the next video and take care. Bye. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch the full length of this video. If you found it useful and enjoyed it, it would mean the world to me if you hit the like button. And if you'd like to get notified the next time I release a new video, remember to hit the subscribe button just under the screen. I'll see you next time and take care.